If your heart isn't helping children and making a change, this is the best place to start. You'll have an impact on their lives. You'll see the difference. I was a mental health uh, caseworker um, and also coached basketball. I came into the field because I was doing corrections out in California. I was getting my master's. I used to be a makeup artist and a store manager. I was a, a tech at a data center. I worked in foster care prior to this. Initially, I started with the agency as a juvenile counselor. Um, what appealed to me the most was making a change in the community. I love this, uh, I love the experience that, that I'm getting here. I grew up in the neighborhood. A lot of the kids that do come into the building, they are from the neighborhood. So I'm very proactive on wanting to make a positive change. An effective YDS is someone that comes in with a passion and they're sincere about the job, they have ideas, and they're sincere about making these kids grow. If you have a great heart for the youth, if you really want to help them, the job won't be so tough. I think you need to come in here with an open mind, not a closed mind. Um, I think you need to throw out all the movies you may have watched years ago and say that's not the reality when you walk into this building. A secure facility is nothing to be played with. You know, you realize the magnitude once you're inside. It's a whole procedure to come into the facility. You know, you have to get your keys, you have to stay on the line, you have to wait for movement, a movement has to be announced. So a typical shift goes like this. We sit in for roll call. Roll call is not we get the house count, where how many kids are in the building, how many kids are in each hall. They give you a hall assignment, they'll call that out in roll call. Keys and radio are given out. We get upstairs, we do a circle up. Where we just go over the day's expectations. Everyone signs into the logbook. I might tell a joke around that time, I might have them solve a riddle. It's kind of an icebreaker. And then we're called down for school on your typical Monday to Friday. From 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., the students are in school in Passages Academy. ELA classes, math, science, social studies. All core academic classes required for graduation. Well, a lot of the YDSs, they try to help the kids that are having challenges with, with school. We'll sit there and we'll help them do their lessons, help with the lesson plans, help with the projects. You get out of school, you go back upstairs, and this is home for a lot of kids, so you go back up to your room and, and you get ready for after school stuff. So this right here, this is J-Hall, it's such a common area. You have the phones on the walls, you have the chairs, their TV, their radio, their chalkboard. All the rooms are the residents' rooms. There's a bed, there's a table, a chair. They eat in the area called the calf. And they sit and they have their lunch. Once they leave the cafeteria, they may have maybe 20 minutes left before they have the next class. The medical aspect is very important. Uh, if they need issues, they need someone to speak to, we refer them. Uh, sometimes they refer themselves. Mental health is a programming that is offered from almost the moment the kids walk in the door until the time that they leave. So we work hand in hand with the YDS staff here in the building and we need their input in order to establish what some of the needs are of the kids. The main yard has a lot of different activities out here. We have the whole field out here that we utilize, whether it be football, soccer, or just sitting on the grass reading a book that they may have picked out of the library. My favorite part of the facility would have to be the gym. The gym, the, you know, the boys get to play basketball. The girls play basketball as well. On the weekends, we have major cleanup. Sundays is your more relaxed day. We do programs on our own as youth development specialists. I was able to program, uh, choreograph a dance for the young ladies that I was working on the hall with. We just have to be creative, whether it's working out, uh, playing cards, Monopoly, chess. We have a DJ workshop, an art workshop, cooking programs that we, as program counselors, do ourselves. So I think one of the most challenging things for a new staff entering this job is how do I speak life into this person, into this young person, to not make those mistakes? To establish the trust, I think a YDS have to be consistent. If you promise something, please deliver. But be consistent and show up to work every day and let that resident know that you're there for them. Our kids are kids. They're faced with a lot of challenges as it is, and so they need people that are willing to help and engage. Well, these are just kids. They need to take away the alleged crimes that they've committed and look at them as just kids, young people. And I think that helps with the development a lot. It's first and foremost most important to follow uh, protocols. You hear the doors closed behind you or the, the keys that you have to hold in your hand. One door opens, it has to be closed before the next door opens. The operation is open 24-7. So we hear Christmas, 
The whole holidays, we're here. Birthdays for them, birthdays for us. Every day is not gonna be a good day, you know? So there's mood swings and stuff like that, but even though their mood may switch up, your mood has to be consistent. You know, you listen to people that came before you in training, you know, they give you as much information, but when you get into the facility, that on-the-job learning from people that have been here for years, that understand the job, that has shown professionalism. You know, there's something called professional coverage. Doing what's right even when it's difficult. And this job is difficult, it is. We look to a lot of our supervisors and a lot of our senior staff and a lot of them are leaders. They come in and they're looking for you to do things in the best way possible. These kids can be very challenging, but once you find a way to have a rapport with them, then it gets a lot easier. I love working with youth in general, so I really expect this job to be like a stepping stone for things that I'm looking forward to do in the future. There's a lot of growth potential, and they can have the opportunity to become supervisors, tour commanders, program counselors. We have some um, YDSs that are actually now case managers, have moved on to PPS throughout the ACS agency, so it's a lot of openings. Every day comes about with new challenges and new opportunities. To be true to who you are is a youth that may need your story, your experience, what you know in life. The most rewarding part, I would have to say, would be getting to see them go home and then they come back into the facility and they tell you, hey, Ms. Dixon, I did this, or, you know, I did go back to school, or I did do this, to see that you have made an impact on their lives. When I see kids um, on the street and they stop me, they looking for me, and it's like, big old Miss Richardson that helped me with so-and-so. Miss Richardson, I did this and that. When you see them in the community and they finish school and they have jobs, it, it's, it's very rewarding. You're not gonna get that story every time, but when you get one, it makes you feel really good. I really feel like if you can work in this kind of environment, then I feel like the, the world is yours. When you come in here and join us, and you follow the directions, and we're able to mentor you, the sky's the limit here. Yeah.